Hey friends, I'm gonna start, or I've already started the uh, cactus painting. I recently painted the pineapple with a palette knife. Uh, not too many weeks ago, you guys voted on social media whether I should paint a pineapple. Oh, there's my cat, or a cactus. Um, and it was so close that I'm doing both. So I just wanted to say hi, and then I'll show you what I'm working on. Hey, I'm all set up. So I have the background painted. I did it uh, just the same as I did the pineapple. So if you wanna look at the pineapple video, you can see how I did it using some tape. Um, I have the cactus on here. This is a 12 by 12 uh, inch and a half deep canvas. And then I had put my palette from the pineapple painting into a Ziploc bag, misted it with a little bit of water. So I used the same colors on the background that I did on the pineapple painting. And I think I'm gonna start with the vase. I'm gonna make it the um, Naples yellow primarily. So this is just a little Naples yellow and white. Ooh, I may need to turn this one upside down. Actually, I might want it a little darker because this, I probably should get my kneaded eraser on and lighten that up a bit. That's going to be probably the lightest area. So maybe I probably should darken this up a little bit. Oh, and I was watching my pineapple video. I need to talk louder, especially when I lean in and think. I get too quiet. It's hard for you guys to hear me, or the volume goes up and down, which would be a pain on your end. All right, there's not a whole lot to this base. So I'm gonna paint for a little bit and come back. Hold on, I wanted to show you something. Let's see if I can get my foot up here. <laughs> I have, oh darn, I can't tell you, let's try the other foot. I have color wheel shoes. I think every artist has to have color wheel shoes. Oh, and in this lighting, my foot looks nice and purple. <laughs> okay, I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, two things I wanted to uh, jump in and say here. I've got most of the vase painted. Uh, I painted it with this smaller palette knife. And then I, the strokes are in this direction. That's actually the uh, um, underneath layer of color. I think I might leave it like that. It's like it's a little dirty spot on the vase. Um, just something like you don't have to paint every square inch of the item you're painting on top of your background. And then just because it's a palette knife painting, uh, I didn't, I wanted to make sure I told you guys that you don't have to use a palette knife, palette knife all the time. I'm gonna use a little, oh, I don't think that's a half inch, three eighths inch filbert brush. And I'm just gonna, um, I'll probably wanna put it in my lap, but I'm just gonna sort of paint in the edge here. And then I'll come back with a palette knife to make it match the rest of the painting. But it could speed up your process a little bit. I'm gonna paint on the end of that. So I guess I just, you know, if you're using a combination of palette knife and brush, um, I would, cause like my background's brushed. Um, I guess I wouldn't call it a palette knife painting if you didn't use a ton of palette knife or a lot of palette knife, if that makes sense. I mean, you can call it whatever you want, of course, it's your painting. So I was just gonna do do that and then come back with the palette knife. Oh, and another thing while I'm thinking of it, this might be a good beginning uh, painting for you to try if you haven't painted much before, because it's just some simple shapes. 
Um, if you do use a palette knife, you get some uh, nice textures really quick that make it look artier. Um, there's not a lot to this. There's a whole lot of dots on it from all those little spiky things, but um, it would be pretty easy to paint, I think. Okay, I'll be back after I get a little more done. So I've got the rim brushed in, and I don't know if I'm gonna put too much detail on it right now. I wanna get more of the cactus in. Um, here I put like a little extra color. I don't know if you remember that spot from a few minutes earlier that came back with some um, Naples yellow and it just kind of softened it, lightened it a little bit, gave it a little more depth. Anyway, I'm gonna see if I can do this so you can see it. So I don't have, here, let's try this way. I'm just getting a little bit of paint on the edge. There's kind of a, there's kind of a blob there. Might be a little too much. And I know, I almost, if I don't have in my reference photo a direct light source, and then, oh, here, when I'm thinking of it. Oh, hang on a sec. So I, I know the light's gonna come from this direction. Even though it's a soft light, that's what I did with the pineapple. And you can see this video on YouTube. And that you can see that I'm using the same, same yellows. All right, so I'm gonna, so I know I want some white over here. I'm just gonna see if I can, whoop. So just because you're painting on a big wooden easel like I have here doesn't mean you can't pick the painting up. There we go. And then paint closer to you, whatever your comfort level is. But I don't think, well, there'd be a little, a little right there maybe. Um, I don't know if I wanna to add too much Ah, I missed until I kind of, I usually put my whites on last unless I need to know uh, how much contrast there's going to be in an area. Alrighty, I'll be back after I get a little more progress done. Ah, I always turn the video off and then I'm like, oh, I could have shown him this. <laughs> um, so I, here, I don't know if you can even see it. Let me free up my hands. So it's hardly a mistake, but I got a little too much white. Boy, I don't think you can see that. But then all I'm gonna do is take a wet, clean brush because the background's dry. Just clean that up a little bit, but I don't know if I need to be that fussy because I could just come over with the green for the cactus and that would fix it too. So now I'm gonna switch palettes. I grabbed what I think I called in the pineapple video, my pea soup green, looks greener when I look at my uh, my phone, uh, my pea soup green palette, um, which is a little different than how I did the pineapple. The pineapple I started with some really dark greens. Um, I think on this one, I'm gonna shape more and then go back with highlights and lowlights. So I'm gonna work, although this is pretty dark, I'm gonna work more with a medium value, I think. And then I'm also, I think I'm gonna, I don't know if this will show in the end. I'm gonna pop in um, some, well, it's actually um, Naples yellow and burnt sienna, but it looks quite brown here, especially on top of this sort of peachy brown color. I don't know if it'll end up showing through when I'm done, but we'll see. If it doesn't, that's fine. So I have a little, well, like here, let me clean it off and I'll show you. No, well, it doesn't wanna, there we go. Okay, so I just grab, or you could pull it out too, and grab a little color on one edge, and then you lay it up next to the edge and pull, and sometimes you don't get anything off of the knife, which is okay. That's what makes it more interesting. Well, that's a lot easier than trying to push it up. 
So I'm just kind of cleaning it off. I'm not sure how much of this uh, brownish, it's sort of an underpainting I want to do. See, I don't know if that's going to make much difference. Just put a little yellow in there. Oh, so today my uh, daughter was helping me. She edits my videos, um, makes thumbnails for them. She's a huge help. Very talented. Uh, anyway, she said I have 99, I hadn't checked recently, and she said I have 99 YouTube followers, which is super exciting because I hardly had any. I don't know if I had 30 when I started just Maybe in March, did I start? I had a couple videos up from way back when. Um, and I'm thinking at 100 subscribers, I can change the name, because right now, um, somewhere it's on YouTube, it, it says that it's Annie Doodlebugs, which is way before I even started licensing. Um, so I need to Google that to see. Oh, well, you know what I need to do? I need to stop painting. And it's not like I have to, but it'll make it a little easier. So this is a really old kneaded eraser. You can tell by how black it is. But when I pull it, I think it's just old because I don't think it's that dirty because when I pull it, it gets much more gray. It's like silly putty. Um, you could use a regular eraser, but I like it because it kind of just pulls up rather than smears. But I'm going to lighten some of these lines if it'll let me. Oh, yeah, there. Um, it's like where I'm painting lighter, it's not covering very well. It'll just take more paint to cover. Just lighten some of these guys here. So put in the comments, um, whether you see this on YouTube or Facebook or Instagram, those are the three main places to follow me. I am on Twitter. I do post on Pinterest, um, but put in the comments where you're from if, if that doesn't, you know, if that makes you nervous, don't worry. That, I totally understand. Or you could even say like USA, you know, United Kingdom. You don't have to tell me, you know, your city, your town. I'd love to know where you guys are from. Also, if you've painted anything, or you've palette knife paint, painted, since that's what primarily this painting's about, I'd love to see it. Post it in the comments. That would be really fun. Oops, that's wet. <laughs> I think I got away with it. I'm gonna have to fix that spot right up here. Actually, what might fix it, let's take a brush and a little bit of water. Aha, that worked. When all else fails, use your fingers. Okay, I got a little sidetracked there, didn't I? kind of facing this way. This would have the most highlight. I'm just gonna stick that there for now. I think maybe here. Of course that might not be my lightest spot anyway.
So sometimes a dirty knife can be kind of fun. Of course, now I'm smoothing that out a little bit, but. I'm not sure which direction I want to go. So as I've mentioned in other videos, especially like with fur, um, I, I, I would say brush stroke direction, but knife direction matters too. Um, I'm putting it on pretty thin. I can tell I just scraped it there. So I can always change direction if I need to. I'm not totally sure. with a cactus. I think we kind of want to go like this. And I just covered that up. I don't know, come back over it. Oh, sometimes it's kind of nice to blend it while it's wet, or you can blend it while it's dry. Both work. too far there. I probably need to be getting darker. We're getting down into the vase here. I'm scraping and there's no paint. So this, I ended up, I was gonna paint the cactus right after the uh, pineapple. And then I ended up putting some art together and sending it to my agent, which is a great thing to do. Um, so this palette, the whole point of the, all that is this palette sat for probably 10 days. I had misted it with water. Uh, I put a little butter dish on top of it just to uh, keep the plastic baggie I put it in off of the paint. And it's still doing really nice. Sometimes the paint will get sticky and I have to remix. Let's see, that's not gonna be lighter there after I did that. It's gonna be darker. Of course, I don't have to get it just right yet. We're just kind of getting some paint down. I've mentioned this before, you can um, moisten your paint and keep it moist with like matte medium or gloss medium, um, which works really well, but it also makes the paint more transparent. So I'm a fan of just misting it slightly. I just got paint on my finger. Um, misting it slightly so you don't mess with the transparency. I got paint underneath my fingernail. Wear old clothes when you paint. There's a tip. So I'm painting this a little lighter and it probably will go darker. But a lot of times there's a little reflect reflective light. So like it'll be lighter on this side and go darker and then the darkest would be right here. Say if it were a ball. And then it'd get a little lighter here. So it's kind of exaggerated right now, but we'll see what I think when I get more paint on. Alrighty, I'll come back in a little bit when I make some more progress. See you guys soon. I just had something uh, happen to me that I thought might, I don't know. Uh, I think it's just common sense, but I thought I might mention it anyway. So I was, you know, painting around the base of the cactus here, and I had earlier painted some dark... I'm going to clean my knife off. Um, I had painted some dark green here, and then it came back with a little bit of color, and then it, was st it wasn't quite dry enough, the dark green that was there, and it was a little sticky, and so then I literally lifted the color off the background. 
um, but it's nice. Just wait till it dries. It's still actually not doing that great. Just wait till it dries a little longer and then come back and add your color. Um, but yeah, uh, acrylic paint as it dries, starts to get sticky and you can lift it right off. <laughs> it's like, oh man, it kind of stinks. So what I've been doing is pretty much using these three colors in some sort of combination. And then I haven't uh, finished some areas because it reminds me I want to pull, just like with the pineapple painting, I want to pull some of the cool greens that I've got on another palette. Um, you don't have to paint, I could paint this whole thing in these warm greens. Um, but since I didn't with the pineapple and I want this to possibly go with it, because um, it's the same colors, I'm gonna pull the cool greens on the, on the shadow side of things and have the warmer greens on the warmer side. So these blank areas remind me that I want some cool colors in there. I thought I'd pop back in again and show you some of the progress I've made. You know, I, mean, I was just thinking, maybe you don't know what I mean by cool, cool and warm. So yellow greens, yellows make it warmer. Uh, the blues, blue greens um, are cooler, just in case. I think that's a little more interesting. But I've done paintings where I just use, you know, very few colors and I don't, I don't, oh, I did it again. I got paint in my fingernail. <laughs> I don't, uh, I don't uh, play with the warm and the cool quite so much. So I really haven't decided, so when I do that, it looks kind of like an apple. Actually, maybe I'm gonna. Bring some cross strokes in. I'm not totally sure what I like on that yet. Yeah, I'm gonna get that paint. I keep holding it funny. We get that paint off of me. Um, it's getting late too. I think I'll quit for today and I'll uh, come back later. Look who's joining me today. Oh, I think she might hop off. <laughs> a little break in painting. So I was painting for a little bit. Uh, freckles left, so I'm making a little bit more progress on the cactus. I think you can see it's a little cooler here. I'm going to add more cool here and a little warmer there. Like I said before, you don't have to do that, but I think it makes it look a little yummier. And then this is the palette, uh, one of the other palettes I had for the pineapple painting. So um, I'm calling this a cooler green. It isn't that cool, but compared to like that one, it is. All right, let's put some more paint on. I already I did the edges off camera um, I held it in my lap and then I just kind of pull the paint from the edge inward you can't do it on a an easel it's just easier for me to see it in my lap get a little closer to me I think I'm going to come back with some more Rusty's oranges because I'm covering them up. Not, there we go. It wasn't coming off my knife. I wasn't holding it flat enough. Oh, that's, that's something I should tell you guys. Let's see if I can show you. So it's just kind of got a little bit of paint on the flat part. 
And then there's gonna be some bumps. So what I did was just rub it flat and it picked up these little highlights. So I can do a couple there. Yeah, he's trying. Just one more make one more way to get texture. So once I get all this filled in and I like it, there's a million dots I gotta put in. I think a dark brownish color. I'll put them in because it really doesn't have the thorny, spiky things. It just has these dots on it, and then on top of it, there's some like lighter color, almost orangey looking. I don't know if that made any sense. It'll make sense when I paint it. So now I'm just kind of smearing it flat. Some of it's dry areas, some of it's over some kind of wet areas. Okay, I think this video is getting kind of long. I'll come back when I've got some dots on. I wanted to show you, I'm putting in the dots. Um, I mixed, so if you can see it, it's a lighter brown. This is straight out of the two burnt umber, so I mixed it with some white. Um, and I probably could have even gone a little lighter because it looks really dark on the green. But I'm also gonna come back uh, with some highlights on these dots. But I also, I don't know if you can see it, but I used black on the ones over the super dark green, just so they show a little bit. And this is one case, usually you try not to, like if you look at my background, I have some verticals here, I got a horizontal here, and then I kind of, it's softer over here. You try not to, uh, what I do, sorry, I'm trying to come up with a word. You might call it cloning to where it's all the same and you're repeating yourself. But here, it actually works to have cloning because the dots are lined up on the cactus. So I'm gonna put all the dots on and maybe even some highlights and I'll come back and show you. Cause, oh, I was gonna show you this. So I switched palette knives. So this is a long skinny guy with a round, with a round tip. And then I just tap it in the paint and basically get a bead of paint on it. You could also do this with a brush. Like I said before, you don't have to paint a palette knife, painting all with a palette knife. You can mix it up. But anyway, I just wanted to show you the dots, um, that the repetition or the cloning works here. You want to do that. And then I switched palette knives. Let's take a look at what I'm thinking and what I did with these dots. So I used the palette knife that I showed you just loaded the tip of it. And then for the top dots, I pretty much used oh, this sort of chocolate color. It looks a little darker on the video and put it all over the top three pieces of the cactus. And then here, I guess why I've got the palette here. On the bottom, bigger parts, I used some straight up uh, red oxide, some uh, burnt umber and red oxide mixed together and a little bit of black. And I'm gonna hold it closer so maybe you could see it. So what I did was I hinted at some of the um, rustier orange colors where the light might be catching it. Can you, I don't know if you can see that. And then as I came around this way, that's actually straight up burnt umber, but it looks black. And then where the light would be catching it around the edge, I've got kind of a almost orange, rusty orange color. And then I was playing a little bit, so there'd be some reflective light from this yellow vase. Now you don't have to get this weird, art weird. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know what I'm trying to say there, but you don't have to get the, this technical. But I'm playing with a little bit of reflective light by making these kind of a rusty red. And then I'm gonna go, oh here, I kind of did it here. I played with making some of these a little lighter than they originally were. And then I'm gonna add some highlights where the light would catch it. Cause I think they're like little fuzzy. They actually might be prickly. I can't tell in my reference photo, but I'm assuming they're kind of little spiky things like most cactuses have. And then I'm gonna use, I don't know if you can see that. 
It looks terrible against my hand. Um, it's just a little knife brush. Sorry, my camera's also having a hard time focusing. It's just a little teeny brush for the highlights so I don't have to concentrate so hard. Um, getting that detail with a palette knife could drive you a little crazy. And then I'm gonna see if this sort of like creamy brown works. It might have to be a little lighter. And then it, when I'm all done with lightening up some of these dots with a little bit lighter value, I'll probably add some white and some not quite white for where the light catches it. So I hope that made sense. I kind of got carried away there. And let me set this down. And then I'm wondering if I lean in, if you're gonna be able to see. Oh, see, I don't know if that's gonna be light enough. I don't think that is. Maybe we'll add some here since it's coming across darker. And then as I've mentioned before, acrylics, they dry darker. And I'm not doing every one. Cause like that one actually might be dark. The contrast. So I do not know if you can see that. So I think I'll add some light spots and then come back. Okay, friends, I'm done. Um, I'm looking at my camera uh, my phone video, phone, I don't know. <laughs> I've got to figure out what to call that. I have video using my cell phone. Um, it looks gorgeous because it smooths out all the texture. Um, I really like it and I can see the pops of white I added on the dots. Um, I've signed it. Oh, can you see it? I don't want it to stick out too much. So it's my initials and then there's two dots, one for favorite son and one for favorite daughter. And then there you can see how I added some, a little more depth so that those um, little spiky dots pop out. And then as you get to where the light is, I used white. And I also kind of made them a little fuzzier in places, made them stick out a little more. This was a lot of fun. I mean, if you don't like doing a lot of little dots, this might not be the painting for you, but really it was quite easy. And then if you look at them, my dots are messy. That just makes them, I think, look more real and more fun. All right, thanks. I'm gonna pop my head in here so I don't scare you. Ooh, that was close. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, leave in the comments if you like this one. I super enjoyed painting it. It was a lot of fun. I think next I'm going to paint some little four by four inch cardinals. And after that, I'm going to paint lemons. So uh, looking forward to seeing you on social media. Talk with you soon. Bye.